Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here at D2S with Leo Pang, who's going to talk today about lithography and some of the new types of lithography that are coming down the pike, including inverse lithography. So first, uh, uh, let me uh, uh, draw the diagram for uh, lithography. So it's like an old-fashioned uh, projector. So you see you have the light source, um, you have the lens, Uh, then you have the slide, you put the pattern on the slide, and here we actually call it mask. Uh, then you have uh, another lens. Then you project it, that um, wafer. So uh, just like the projector, uh, you put your design patterns uh, on the mask, uh, then you can project the image uh, on the wafer. Uh, then uh, basically you do a resist development, just like a, a film. Um, after you develop that, uh, you do the etching, you etch the pattern on the wafer, you do this uh, for many layers. That's how you be build the, uh, the semiconductor uh, uh, chips. Uh, so, uh, and this uh, forward process is well known. Uh, so basically, uh, if we see the mask it's, uh, represented by M, uh, the wafer is W. And this uh, uh, forward process, uh, we can call it a function uh, of F. And this system is basically a, a partial coherent uh, optical uh, system. Uh, and the people can model that very nicely. So the lithography process, if you uh, uh, see it mathematically, it would be a wafer pattern equals to a forward function of a mask pattern. Um, and the, the best uh, uh, lithography would be if you want to print the pattern on a wafer, uh, then you would like to calculate what the mask looks like. So basically the mask pattern would be a inverse of this process, we call the inverse function uh, of the wafer. Right? And the central inverse calculation uh, is basically called the uh, inverse lithography. Um, and the uh, people have been doing this uh, since the uh, 1980s. Uh, the bunch of researchers, they have done that. Uh, Luminescent was the first company commercialized uh, uh, this kind of uh, technology. And in 2014, uh, I named it as a inverse lithography technology. And we uh, didn't trademark it. Uh, the intent is to have uh, people basically call it uh, IoT, inverse lithography technology. This is almost like the old negatives that they used, the negative plates that they used in photography 100 years ago, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, y y exactly. But the, uh, the key is uh, how do you uh, calculate this? And how do you calculate this uh, fast enough so that uh, uh, you can uh, do those uh, calculation uh, you know, for, every, for every design, for every wafer? Um, uh, why do we need this? Well, in the old days, uh, Lithography is uh, pretty much straightforward, right? So you have uh, some pattern like a, a contact hole. Uh, you just uh, put that pattern on the mask, then you would end up on wafer a contact hole. So uh, in the old days, what you have put on the mask pattern, you all end up on the wafer pattern. But uh, since we are shrinking those features, at a certain point, uh, the feature size is getting close to the wavelengths that used in uh, this lithography process. And uh, as you remember from the high school physics, uh, if this uh, whole size is uh, about the same size as the wavelengths, uh, then you are not going to uh, project this uh, whole uh, anymore. What you end up is uh, the fuzzy uh, disk uh, plus a bunch of uh, uh, green patterns 
and we call that uh, diffraction. Um, what process node is that becoming a real problem at? Is it 10? Uh, no, actually this happens uh, at about like a, uh, 40 nanometer, right? Uh, at that time, uh, uh, you, you have a different ways to actually uh, improve your resolution, right? Uh, of course, one thing is uh, you can reduce the, the wavelengths, right? Uh, another thing is uh, you can make your lens bigger, so that we call, uh, we increase the, the NA. Uh, at 40 nanometer, actually, when we started the, uh, this uh, inverse discography uh, technology development, then another technology also came up. Uh, that's called the uh, immersion discography. So basic idea is uh, you can actually fill the space between the lens and the wafer with water. Uh, so that will actually increase your NA, and the, the result is uh, you are going to uh, get a, a better uh, image and also with a, a bigger process window. And because of the, uh, the immersion lithography, this uh, whole lithography uh, industry got developed uh, further for a couple uh, uh, generations. Uh, and on top of that, uh, the, from the design side, the people trying to uh, make the design simpler. So the design used to be two-dimensional, but they are now trying to make most of them uh, one-dimensional designs. And also the double pattern. So the idea is uh, you cannot print uh, the patterns with such a density, uh, then you just uh, uh, split them into uh, two uh, two masks. So you print, uh, uh, let's see, this is uh, one, two, three, four, five. So you print uh, one, three, five uh, with one mask, then you print uh, two, four in another mask. So that basically increased the, the pitch, you double the pitch. Uh, that's how you can uh, print them. Uh, but the problem is, uh, uh, so now you have tried uh, all of the tricks, right? Um, uh, at the, the next uh, uh, generation, I would say like a 10 nanometer node, uh, people have explored all of the uh, uh, options. Uh, we are using immersion, uh, we are doing the double patterning, uh, but still uh, on those designs, like if you just have the one dimensional patterns, that cannot make a real design, right? So you have to cut those layers. Uh, and also you need the, uh, the contact the wear layer uh, to connect the, uh, the different layers uh, in the design. And the, uh, the cutting layer and the, the contact wear layer, those are the most uh, uh, challenge layers uh, to print. Uh, if we look at uh, the technologies available uh, to print those layers for 10 nanometer, there used to be uh, multiple options. Right? One is uh, EUV, the other one is uh, multi-B direct right, and the IoT are always there. Um, but at this point, we can see uh, EUV will not be available uh, for 10 nanometer. Uh, the multi-beam direct right, that won't be available uh, for uh, 10 nanometer. Uh, so the only option left to write those uh, uh, contact wear layers and the cutting layers are IoT. That's why IoT now is uh, very, very important that people are all talking about IoT. When you start getting into uh, inverse lithography, what do you need that's different than what you have today in terms of tools, in terms of technology, and also in terms of know-how? Right. So uh, to understand that, first you you have to uh, we have to look at uh, you know what kind of IoT patterns looks like on mask. Uh, we can still use this uh, contact as an example. So in order to print just the contact without those uh, diffraction rings, you would imagine doing this uh, reverse calculation, uh, then on the mask, you need uh, some kind of like uh, extra patterns other than that uh, contact hole, so that uh, eventually they will surprise uh, those rings on wafer, right? 
So a typical uh, inverse lithography uh, mask pattern for contact to print the contact on wafer would look like something like a contact then plus some kind of like a ring type of assist features. So this is actually very different uh, from the uh, conventional or traditional mask. Uh, because on the traditional mask, you just uh, put the, the design patterns and the, those uh, design patterns are basically the Manhattan patterns, right? So to, uh, to uh, well, one challenge is to generate uh, these kind of IoT patterns uh, and also make them uh, more manufacturable. Uh, that's basically those uh, EDA companies like uh, Luminescent uh, Synopsis, uh, uh, Luminescent was acquired by Synopsis and Mentor, those companies are working on. Uh, then to realize uh, Sancha masks, uh, the most uh, critical or most difficult uh, part uh, is actually the mask making. Uh, to talk about the mask making, let, let's first uh, understand how the mask making works. So uh, the first generation of the mask writer uh, is the uh, raster format. So basically, you all just uh, write this dot, right? And uh, whenever there is a pattern, you write it. Uh, when there is no pattern, you uh, pass it. Uh, right. uh, then the second, then people look at it, the people say, oh, since the pattern is mainly my heart and uh, the best way or the better way to write that would be uh, if I can just uh, every shot I write a kind of like a rectangle then I can use this uh, rectangle shot to compose the pattern right I just uh, write on the pattern instead of writing everywhere so that called the variable shape B uh, so VSB technology so that's how the current uh, generation of mass writer works Right, so that actually works really well for my heart and pattern uh, on the mask. But the, you would imagine, uh, let's say, if we want to write uh, the IoT mask, which it could be collinear, and also there are many non my heart and patterns, uh, that is actually quite a challenge. So what you have to do, you know, writing the mask pattern is just like uh, using the bricks to build a wall, right? So to build a wall like this, you would have to first uh, uh, use the smaller uh, bricks. Right? So that end up you have a many, many shots, like a way too many shots. So the right hand would be uh, too long and uh, you cannot even write it. Um, that's how the, uh, the D2X technology actually helps. Uh, D2X, uh, a couple years ago, proposed uh, uh, to write a mask uh, using the overlap shot. So you can imagine if we allow the, those blocks to overlap with each other, then you have uh, much more flexibilities. So you can use a bigger shot write them and uh, this will firstly reduce the shot count so you can still manage the right hand secondly actually those are smaller shot their fidelity and uh, uh, the margin the process margin is actually uh, smaller than the bigger shot so uh, if you use an overlap shot you have a not only less number of shot but each shot is bigger, so your fidelity is actually uh, better. Uh, so with that, uh, you will be able to uh, write the IoT masks. Uh, so I, I think for 10 nanometer, by pairing the inverse lithography technology and uh, uh, the overlap shot, and also uh, once you do the overlap shot, you have to do the uh, simulation to really simulate them, make sure they are at the, the right location, give you the, the right result. And pairing those together, you can realize the inverse lithography technology for.